I'm speaking with Beth Weierman. She is the pastor of United Presbyterian Church and Zion Lutheran in Beaver Butler Presbytery. Beth, it's an interesting um, partnership you have going on there. Tell us about what, what is going on in your neck of the woods. Thanks, Mike. Um, so I'm here in Ambridge, Pennsylvania. I'm in my office at what is it was Zion's First Lutheran Church. About a block away, not even a block away, is the building that United Presbyterian Church, what, where they were for over 100 years. And several years ago, the church became cumbersome to maintain, but the congregation spent a time of discernment and decided to stay together and voted to sell the building, which they did to Trinity Seminary here in Ambridge. And we were, actually we did for a while, use some space on Trinity's campus, which actually used to be a Presbyterian church. Uh, one of the pieces of United Presbyterian that used to be two churches that were united in the 70s. And so while we were worshiping there, then a member of the Presbyterian church and a member of Zion's First Lutheran Church are friends and they began talking. There are just a few folks left. Uh, there's a pretty small congregation of the Lutheran congregation. And uh, so in those con conversations, they haven't had a pastor for quite a few years. And but they have a younger, healthier building that wasn't as difficult to maintain. And they had people who wanted to continue to worship and witness to Christ here in this community. So we got together, we had months of discussion, and we decided, the congregations both decided to come together. And that was in February of last year. We worshiped for the first time the last Sunday of February last year. So um, in that time, we have become what they like to call we've gone through lots of words we're not merging we're not we're a blended congregation and uh, we're now in the process of developing a covenant and a contract so that we can become formally federated uh, that process has been uh, really interesting but i would back up to say that quite a few years ago when the Presbyterians were languishing in their very large building, beautiful, but large and in need of repair, um, they wrote letters to the Methodist church, which is about a block away, and this Lutheran church to see what they were doing. Uh, turns out the Methodists are worshiping about seven or 10 people on a Sunday, and there were about eight or 10 people worshiping in the Lutheran church here. And so it's normal for churches to see themselves as autonomous and so the exciting thing for me is just looking around and seeing who might who might we witness together with if we are followers of christ the congregations were both concerned about their identity about their denomination to some degree but you know more some individuals more than others but as time has gone by it's really become about community connection relationship and sharing our faith the issues of blended worship between the elca and the pcusa have been almost non-existent the love of service has trumped the need for individual uh, issues or concerns um, and it's it's really been fun to watch the process is not it doesn't happen very it doesn't happen quickly it's just slowly allowing people to become more and more comfortable together people who probably would not have been interested in federation a year ago our leaders for the cause at this point. So I, I think 
that is how we let this, you know, open ourselves to the possibilities around us and then allow the spirit to work slowly and steadily and not look for some, we're not pushing forward, we're just moving forward. And that's been, that's made people more comfortable. And in some ways it's just more faithful because um, it's respectful of everyone's being on board. The other interesting thing about where this building sits is directly next door is a wonderful community uh, organization called Center for Hope, which feeds 600 families a month. And so we find ourselves, you know, uh, next door to an organization that is meeting all kinds of needs in our community it has a experimental program of food lockers for people to pick up their food when they can and not just on a specific time on a specific day. So the the opportunity for us to work together has been really exciting. A congregation that was worshiping about 23 and a congregation that was worshiping about eight um, is now about 35 or 40. So, and we are just slowly, because we're slowly coming together, developing more relationships within the community. Um, there isn't a, there isn't any, it's been difficult because there isn't any guidebook. There are other churches, of course, that have become federated or union congregations, which is a different, was not the choice that we're making, but it's similar. And so you sort of make the way by walking it. Um, and we're taking notes so that if somebody else is interested in exploring the possibilities with a neighbor congregation, we'd be glad to have a conversation with them. Thank you for your time. This is a great uh, cooperative you have going on there and uh, keep up the great work. Thank you.